I was w wishing they could have left the set up. It was a beautiful set. Part of it is falling down over there, but it was all set up here in the center, and it looked like a cave. And of course, at 11 o'clock, the Vacation Bible School will make their presentation, and then that's followed by a potluck, which you are, of course, invited to participate in. Our gospel text has Jesus beginning his journey to Jerusalem. And uh, it tells some things about Jesus, especially as he asks people to follow him. He asks for commitment from them. We're going to take a look at Paul's letter to the Galatians and talk about freedom. Let's prepare our hearts for worship through the brief order of confession and forgiveness found on the third page of your bulletin. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, abounding in steadfast love toward us, healing the sick and raising the dead, showering us with every good gift. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Just and gracious God, we come to you for healing in life. Our sins hurt others and diminish us. We confess them to you. Our lives bear the scars of sin. We bring these also to you. Show us your mercy, O God. Bind up our wounds, forgive us our sins, and free us to love for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Apostle Paul assures us, when we were dead in our trespasses, God made us alive together with Christ, nailing the record of our sins to the cross. Jesus says to you, your sins are forgiven. Be at peace and tell everyone how much God has done for you. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace by greeting those around you.
Blessed be the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Lord be with you. And also with you. Sovereign God, ruler of all hearts, you call us to obey you and you favor us with true freedom. Keep us faithful to the ways of your Son, that leaving behind all that hinders us, we may steadfastly follow your paths through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The kingdom of heaven is near As you have received, so then must you give Be not afraid with the Lord at your side, for Jesus died so we may live. He said, come follow me, come follow me, come by yourselves to a quiet place, come follow For he is 
is gentle and humble in heart, and Jesus died to make us whole. He said, come follow me, come follow me, come by yourselves to a quiet place, come follow Someday we may see his face. Come follow me, come follow me. That someday we may see his face. A reading from 1 Kings. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazel as king of Aram. Also you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king of Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat of Abul-Meholah, as prophet in your place. So we set out from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat, who was plowing. There were 12 yoke of oxen ahead of him, and he was with the 12. Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle over him. He left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. Then Elijah said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? He returned from following him, took the yoke of oxen, and slaughtered them. Using the equipment from the oxen, he boiled their flesh and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he set out and followed Elijah and became his servant. The word of the Lord. me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. But those who run after other gods, shall have their troubles multiplied. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. My heart therefore is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Galatians. For freedom Christ has set us free. 
Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For they, these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law, nor the works of the flesh are obvious, fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If you live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the ninth chapter. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. But they, were not, but they did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on their way to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, I will follow you Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My sermon was much too theological last night, so I tried to pare it down today. Uh, freedom to follow. Let me begin with a joke that someone told me just before worship. It's a take on the question, how are you? So the person says, how are you? And the aunt, he said, tell me in one word how you are. And the answer is, good. And he said, 
Well, now tell me in two words how you are. Not good. <laughs> Which actually uh, brings us to the conflict within us all. Good and not good. And this whole question about freedom and how we are truly free in Christ. Because Lutheran theology understands that even when we're baptized, the struggle with sin actually becomes more intense. More intense. But that's why we need to relax into the very freedom of God, freedom and forgiveness. This week at Vacation Bible School, we had uh, memory buddies, one for each day. This was Sal the Salamander, and his Bible verse was, O Lord, you alone are my hope. And his slogan, Jesus gives us hope. And if you were Vacation Bible School kids, you'd shut out, follow him. Matha, the, ma the moth, Jesus said, take courage, I am here. Jesus gives us courage. Then Radar, the bat, he will show you what path to take. Jesus gives us direction. We know, that real, we know what real love is because Jesus gave his life for us. This is Olivia, the owl. And if you saw on Facebook, it was Owl Night. And a person from the zoo came and brought in four owls. Really quite impressive. Jesus gives us love. Our great power is from God, not from ourselves. Jesus gives us his power. On Tuesday night, I became a little uh, alarmed as we got closer and closer to 8 o'clock. Because at 8 o'clock, the Narcotics Anonymous people come in and have their meeting. And I was worried because I know a few people who uh, are caught up in addiction, they need their meetings. They're highly dependent upon their meetings. And I was worried that we wouldn't be getting out of their room on time. But they made some adjustments and we made some adjustments and got them in there. But it also reminded me, what's the first tenant of the 12-step program. I am powerless over my addiction. I am powerless to do anything. I need a higher power. Well, this is Ray. Jesus gives us his power. Ray is a glow worm. Jesus gives us his power, and that's what we're going to talk about, the power of Christ today. That's a glow worm. And I'm going to skip through. Two lists. If you were paying attention, as Carl read, there were two lists in our gospel lesson. Uh, the conditions of the flesh quite a lengthy list, and Ted says to Rick, that's quite a list. Rick, the first one or the second one? Oh, the second, the second, I'm familiar with the first one, the sins of the flesh. I thought it was funny. Freedom in Christ. How did this whole, how did we get into this mess? And it all goes back to Adam and Eve. In Reformation theology, Lutheran theology, we talk about the old Adam that needs to be destroyed. And we talk about it being drowned in baptism. And what is that old Adam? It's a proverbial story in Genesis, where the first humans, Adam and Eve, sinned. Now there's, of course, the big debate where they're an actual Adam and Eve, and that's not relevant. Because you and I each have 
that moment in our lives when we're caught up in sin, and sin becomes original to us. And now, the struggle. How do I live for Christ, with Christ, by the power of Christ? All those works of the flesh, and there are many. First step is to admit we're powerless, but sinful control is firing God and putting yourself in charge. We try to be in charge of our lives, especially our spiritual lives. Uh, I'd like things to revolve around me. And when we get hurt, we try to avoid pain in our lives, whether that's uh, our passionate desires or whether that's just being hurt by other humans. And what do we do? That's when we get involved in all kinds of addictions from sex all the way to being a super do-gooder to cover up the pain, to not be honest with ourselves, to not be honest with God. And nothing can happen with those sins of the flesh in our lives until we are honest. An interesting article was uh, in the Wall Street Journal. And in that article, and it came out of the Orlando killings, and two reporters went and started to interview the families of the victims. And what they found were, were families, many families, they found in church dealing with their loss. But they were also realizing for the first time something they never knew. They never knew their child was gay. And what that brought up in them was the realization that a big part of their life, their loved one's life, they never shared, nor could they share. And they felt so guilty about the fact that if they had shared it, they would have been met with resistance or even hatred. Well, what are the big, deep secrets in your life? The first thing is being honest and understanding we are powerless. Christ is the power in our lives. So how do you look at God then? Some see God as that demander, shape up your life. All those sins of the flesh, all those things you think you need to do to survive, shape up. Soren Gurkagaard puts it this way. Once, he once said, that a person, a person rests in forgiveness when the thought of God does not remind him or her of sin, but reminds him or her of forgiveness. So when you think of God, do you think of sin? Or do you think of forgiveness? We can never be free until our first thought of God is that, oh God, thank you. I'm a forgiven person. Sin gets defeated when we remember that. And in the power of Christ, as we're honest with ourselves, and we can be honest with one another, we can do the next step, which the Apostle Paul tells us in this text, freedom is being able to love one another. Being able to love. 
Let me give you an example, and I'm going to end with this. I really pared down my sermon from last night. Don't you feel sorry for those people? <laughs> Our second answer is freedom to love. So, as we put God back on the payroll, let me give you an example of someone's life, and I've shared this example with you before. And that is this, the story of a princess. True story. True. Marion Preminger. She was born in Hungary, was born in a castle, born with a, uh, not merely a silver spoon in her mouth, but a gold one. Had maids, tutors, governesses, butlers, chauffeurs. Uh, whenever they traveled, her grandmother insisted they bring their own linen. Takes care of bug bed bugs, doesn't it? And when she was attending school in Vienna, she met Otto Preminger, who was a doctor. At the time, Otto Preminger became a famous uh, movie director. And when Marion came to the United States and to Hollywood, she got caught up in alcohol, drugs, and prom promiscuity. And when Otto Preminger found out, he divorced her. So then she goes to Europe and she played the, uh, well, the life of a divorcee in, in Europe, a socialite. And then she heard about Albert Schweitzer coming to town. And she always admired, admired Alfred Schweitzer. So she said, I want to meet him. She called him. Now, now, talk about a person caught up in the sins of the flesh, right? I want to meet Albert Schweitzer. And they said, well, he's at a little village church playing the organ. So she went there and she asked if she could turn the pages of his music. And as they talked, Albert Schweitzer says, and she spent the entire day with him, and Albert Schweitzer says, well, why don't you have dinner with me tonight? And when they did, he then said, she said, you, for the first time, are the person, I've, the only person that makes sense in my life. I want to follow you. And he invited her to Africa. She spent the rest of her life in Labyrinth, the girl born in a castle, raised as a princess. She changed bandages, bathed babies, fed lepers, and became free. And she wrote in her autobiography, all I wanted to be was everything. Everything did not satisfy her. Only finally being able to love enough to love others, to serve, did she find her life. Well, that's freedom doesn't mean we're not struggling like crazy. But in Christ, we're forgiven and given the grace to love and serve one another. So, put God back on the payroll, and we have freedom in Christ. Amen.
Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. Let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Anointing God, you commission us for our ministry in daily life. You also call us to pass our faith and ministry on to the next generation. We thank you for a VBS week where we made an effort to pass on our faith. Inspire us in our equipping of others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of creation, you have given us all that we need. Inspire us to honor your creation as an inheritance and trust. Lord, in your mercy. God of the nations, the distractions of the world make us realize that we are truly dependent on you. Our hearts ache for the trouble spots of the world, including the families of the Orlando victims and the news that foreign supporters of ISIS has taken over Sirti, Libya, murdering, torturing, crucifying Christians and Muslims alike. We pray for peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Through the fruit of your spirit, make us healers in the world. Bring love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control into the lives of all in need. We pray for healing, especially for Meredith Adams, Ryan Backus, Larry Carlson, Terry Carlson, Pam Cole, Larry DeLargy, Lucy and Lyle Dolly, Sandy Drake, Daniel Everett, Ron Fells, Jeff Hempfell, Ron Hover, David Jones, Alan Caymans, Ellen Lassant, Carol Lohmeyer, Paula Merkley, Chris Marquardt, Willis Melgren, Eddie Miner, Norma Mueller, Carolyn Nyes, Leon Parker, Benita Stamper, Lucy Stilwell, Rod Thurman, Linnea Ugla, and Luann Thrash. Are there any others? O oh God, gather us in the promise of life forever with you. Comfort those who mourn especially the family and friends of Lynn Peterson. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Steadfast God, guide this congregation by your spirit. Make us neighbors to each other, ready to be and receive strangers, and to show us how to love our neighbors as you intend. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God. Trust in your promise to hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. God of mercy and grace, The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Lift up your hearts. Let us give him thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so, with all the saints and all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. O oh God, as a mother comforts her child, so you comfort your people, carrying us in your arms and satisfying us with this food and drink, the body and blood of Christ. Send us now as your disciples, announcing peace and proclaiming that the reign of God has come near. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I do not have a lot of uh, announcements for you. There is a sign-up sheet in the back. Those of you that are Cardinals fans, there's a sign-up sheet for Lutheran night at the Cardinals or the ball field or whatever it's called. If you are interested, sign up. I think that's about it. Read your messenger. Receive this Oh, by the way, there will be a potluck and if you, uh, after the second service today, and uh, if you wanted to come back for that, that would be great. If you happen to see um, Margaret Grote and or Rachel Hover, they were the directors of our vacation Bible school this week, and they did a great job. But they need to hear you say thank you. Uh, and we do have some of our helpers out here, I'm sure many more uh, at the next service. Receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make decisions. Go in peace, remember the poor. Thanks be to God.